Hi, Joel. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, we had a new release. One, one, two, one. Exactly. Uh, I was prepared for you to ask a question, but yes, we had the release one twenty one, yes. and well, I have the a benefit of it being take two. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So uh, before we actually start talking about the uh, new stuff, I have a tip of the day. And it is exactly the same tip of the day we had last time. Uh, please pin your Docker image. But uh, there is a good idea. Um, if you did pin your Docker image last time, mm -hmm. then this time, as you update to 121, you should update your pin as well. Mm -hmm. And this is basically to demonstrate how to work with uh, pinning Docker images. Mm -hmm. So th this makes sure that you have all the right like dependencies, like the Ubuntu packages and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK, so we have a little bit of agenda for this release. So let's jump straight, straight in to the first part, uh, test runner update. So first thing, a little bit of a recap. In Playwright 114, we released the web first assertions. And the web first assertions is this uh, smart assertion, which is uh, first thing first is asynchronous, so you have to await it. And then you can pass in um, something like a locator. Usually you pass in a locator, and then this smart assertion will requery the locator until the criteria will be met. Mm -hmm. Like in this example, for example, it will wait until locator has certain text in it. Yeah, so, so like if it says like loading, 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 submitted, it won't fail your test. It'll realize that that's good. Yes, exactly. So we have all kinds of these web first assertions. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check for checkbox state. You can see if the element is visible or not. You can mm -hmm. check some JavaScript property. And these are good, but sometimes this is not enough. <laughs> when? <laughs> when? Yes, for example, when you want to wait for something that, which is not a locator, right? Oh, OK, yeah. So for these use cases, in this release, we introduce a new universal retry and assertion. Oh. which is called expect poll. Mm -hmm. So here's a small, a small example of this universal retrain assertion. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, dissect it into parts and see what it is what. So first thing first, it's an async assertion as well. So you have to await it. Mm -hmm. No surprise. And then you have to use this new expect.poll function instead of expect. Mm -hmm. Now, as a first argument, you can pass and you should pass a predicate here, actually a function. It might be an asynchronous function like here. And then this uh, retry and assertion will pull this function until it satisfies this condition. Okay. So in this particular case, our predicate will just fetch some URL mm -hmm. and return a status of the response. And this retry and assertion will fetch this URL over and over again until the status will be more or equal uh, than 200. OK, I have a series of questions. Uh, sure, go for them. Um, how, how often does this poll? So it has a log scale bag off. It starts, like it slows down the polls. Oh, it's very, OK, so it's very clever is your answer. It is clever. It will not yes. over. Nobody knows speed. how often it polls. Nobody knows, yes. OK. but. Um... What happens if I if this function, this polling function, what happens if it throws an error? Uh, the whole thing will throw an error. We will not retry. OK, so if you have something that might throw an error, but that's OK, you should catch it. Yes. Yes, OK. Um, those, are my, those are all of my questions. <laughs> awesome. Then we will continue. OK, so you can actually also specify a second argument to expect this poll function with options. You can customize the error message. Mm -hmm. And you can customize the timeout for how long we will try polling. All right. Can I also change the the uh, back off parameters? In one twenty two, I think uh, Pavel. Oh, this feature. Yes, okay, you're so spoiling. I didn't know yes. that one twenty two was going to come out. You know. Yes, 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 yes. So it's upcoming. Okay. In one twenty one, you cannot yet. Okay. Okay. So this is great, but I want to warn you and everybody from overusing the this universal retry assertion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here's an example. For uh, We have this web first assertion that checks for certain text and locator. Yeah. So this is good. Mm -hmm. Well, trying to re-implement the whole thing with universal retry assertion is not so good. It's error prone. It might not work. It's very verbose. So right, do so use web first assertions if you can. Pretty much, if I'm using a locator inside my expect poll, I should, it's probably just going to be easier to use 
a web first assertion that takes yes. a locator. Yes. Okay. Rule of thumb. Yes, if mm -hmm. you have a locator inside your expect pool, do use a web first assertion instead. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, moving on. Next chapter. Uh, screenshot updates. And I have a few stories for you to tell here. Mm -hmm. So the first one is very simple. Say, for example, I have this two-liner. I'm just taking a screenshot of some input field and I am comparing it against expectation. Mm -hmm. Well, I take a screenshot and this is what I see. No surprise. Sure. You have a very fancy input field. Yeah, this is from GitHub uh, yes. code search. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I run this test one more time and I see this. Can oh, no, it's blinking. Yeah, we have yeah. a blinking text red. Mm -hmm. So what would I do? How do I work around this? Um, it turns out it's it's like uh, there's there's some WebKit CSS yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Web you, you, as user carrot and you put the color to be transparent and then yes, uh, you, you, smart. Yes. yes, you can do this, but actually, if you just update to Playwright one twenty one, you mm -hmm. no longer need to do this. We hide this blinking carrot by default. Yay. So all your screenshots are now stable. If okay. for some reason you don't want it uh, like hidden and you wanted to actually see it blinking, you can opt out of this behavior. We have a carrot option for you. Okay, no one should ever do that though. No, no one should do that. Unless you don't have carrots yes. in your screenshot because, well, wait, so the option makes it so that it blinks again. It doesn't make it so that it's always visible. Yes, so that it okay. blinks again. Sometimes they want it to be always visible, but. Yes, yes. It might come up in future updates, yeah. but we don't do this now. Okay, next story. This one is a little bit more long. So here I have a test that verifies layout on an iPhone 12. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I just navigate to like Microsoft slash Playwright in this case. I take a screenshot and I compare it against expectation. Yeah. So let's see what the screenshot looks like. So this is not a bug. The screenshot is just that big that it didn't fit on the screen on the slide. Okay. So I, I can actually zoom out. Yeah. And this is like what it looks like comparing to my yes, slide. Because the iPhone has a lot of pixels. Exactly, because we take screenshot of hardware pixels. Yeah. So we have this huge image, which weighs more than 250 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. It has lots of pixels. Yeah. Now, most likely, you don't need all these pixels to verify your layout or CSS styles. Mm -hmm. So now we introduce a new option called scale for screenshot. So now instead of taking hardware pixels screenshot, you can take CSS screenshot. And this will give you take a screenshot of CSS pixels. So this mm -hmm. is nine times less pixels in this image. Yeah. This size is 390 by 664. And this mm -hmm. weighs a little bit more than 60 kilobytes. Yeah. This is also nice if I like am taking pictures on my like, like not emulating device. I have like laptops or stuff. And you know, maybe one has two times pixel resolution and one has one times. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, uh, what what other scales can I specify, or is it just CSS? just CSS and device for now? Okay. Devices, hardware, pixels. This is the default, uh, but I think everyone should just try and use the CSS scale option. Mm -hmm. uh, this gives you faster processing because comparing small images is faster. This saves you on data transfer and this saves mm -hmm. you on storage. And you are you can do perfectly fine validating of CSS and layout. Like same functionality, cheaper for you. Oh, okay, so that's important. So this doesn't change like the device scale factor in the page. This does not change device scale factor. Yes, yes. Okay. So it's just a downscaling of screenshots. Yes. So you get high resolution images, and then they get squished down because uh, it's just a small screenshot. Yeah, just a small screenshot. Awesome. Um, next small story, and this is just a small pretty thing. Mm -hmm. So in our HTML report, we have this diff view for image comparison. Mm -hmm. And now we have a slider, so you can slide uh, left and right, and you see the actual and expected. Oh, that that whole website looks different. <laughs> yeah, this is my demo. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a different page. You should have done the input with the carrot. <laughs> it wouldn't be prominent enough, you know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and the last part of this video, we have a little bit of announcements. Two things here. First, our Docker image is now uh, slim. We don't have Python anymore. So if you do want to use Python, do use mcr.microsoft.com slash player slash Python. Okay. So there's Docker in containers for Python. Yeah. We warned everybody last release. Yeah. But yeah. Um, now we actually 
Muy bien. True. And the next announcement, we have experimental role selectors. If you know what it is and you want to help us dog food it, uh, give it a try. Here is a link to the release uh, where we explain how to use it. But we will actually tell you way more about this in Playwright 1.22. Okay, I'm excited. Yes. Okay, so summary. Uh, we have a universal retrain assertion. Uh, we have new options for screenshots, you know, caret and scale, and the new beautiful diff slider. And our Docker images are now slim, and we have experimental role selectors. Mm -hmm. So if you like what you do, uh, we have a documentation playwright at dev. Um, everything is hosted on GitHub at Microsoft slash Playwright, mm -hmm. and we have external uh, a lot of social presence. Mm -hmm. So please do join our Slack channel, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, and if yeah. you like what you do, like please, the video. Uh, <laughs> yes, like the video and give us a star on GitHub. Yes, yes. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm.